I absolutely love a Glenallachy. So I thought I'd show you my bottles. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. For those of you that don't know, the Glenallachie Distillery is a Speyside distillery that's located pretty much bang in the middle of the region of Speyside. It's a relatively new distillery by comparison. It was founded in 1967 and it was mothballed and it changed hands and it was sold and bought, but it ended up in the hands of the Chivers brothers. And in 2017, it was sold to Billy Walker. To this day, it remains one of the very, very few independently owned and run Scotch whisky distilleries. Not long after it was bought by Billy Walker uh, in 2018, they released their first core range of whiskies with a 12, a 15 and an 18 and maybe a 21. I'll check that out and put it below. And that is exactly where our story starts today. So why do I love Glenallachy so much? Well, all of their whiskey is bottled at a minimum of 46%. It is all unchill filtered and all natural color across the board. Secondly, I really like kind of the base spirit, the, the fingerprint of the distillery. Um, it's fruity, it's balanced. A lot of the time it's got a little bit of a spiciness on the tail end. Usually I tend to find a little bit of chocolate in the finish, but texture wise, it has like a really nice, rich, slightly sticky sweetness that seems to permeate through all of their whiskies. And lastly, and arguably one of the most important aspects is the pricing. While there are a few pricier bottles and prices have risen slightly in line with the inflation over here in the UK, for the most part, their whiskey is incredibly good value for money. Not only are you getting the numbers that we like to see across all the bottles as standard, they have a great selection of affordable cask finishes. There's always something new and interesting coming out. It's not the kind of whiskey that people are hoarding and collecting aggressively, so it's usually fairly available. And anything that you can't get, tends not to really do that well at auction. So you can usually scoop a really, really good deal. I could not tell you how many Glenallachies I've drunk, but it's got to be upwards of maybe 30 different expressions. And I can honestly say I have never been disappointed by a single one. But anyway, enough of that rubbish. Let's talk about whiskey. We'll start off with two of the core range whiskies and the rest kind of in no particular order. They're just as came off the shelf and how I enjoy them. First up, we have the Glenallachie 12. I've reviewed this on the channel before. I think it's fantastic value for money. Of course, it's got all the numbers we like to see, but it's the flavor that really sells me on this. It's balanced, it's jammy, it's fruity, it's got spice, it's nicely sherried, but it's incredibly balanced. It's a fantastic entry level whiskey. I know that because when people have reached out to me that aren't whiskey drinkers and have said, what should I buy? I point them in the direction of this and I always get a fantastic response. You can still pick this up for about 45 to 50 pounds, which maybe wasn't quite as a good deal as it um, used to be. You could usually pick it up for around like 38 pounds and stuff like that. But still to this day, this is a shelf staple. It, I've always got a bottle on my shelf open and I think I always will. Next up, we have the 15. Now, for a lot of people, this is the, uh, the more preferable whiskey to the 12, but I've got to say, I'm a 12 guy myself. If you want to get the 15, you take the 12, you turn down the fruitiness and you turn up the spice. It is a much richer, kind of thicker, heavier dram. It's got some like wonderful, sweet, almost smoky notes going on. It's got a lot more tannins. It's less bright on the front. It's less kind of red, grapes and a little bit more like sweet smoke. This retails for about 65 pounds. As I say, I am 
I am a 12 guy myself. While I do absolutely love the 15, I think it is an incredible whiskey. I don't think it's 20 pounds better than the 12, but I can assure you, plenty of people will tell you that I am wrong. And it is in fact the 15 that is the better value proposition. I completely understand why. Personally, I just like the £45 price point and what I'm getting for that money. Next up, we have the 10 year old cask strength batch four. Now this is a little bit older, We um, as in older when I purchased it. I think we're on about batch nine now. This being cask strength is bottled up at 46.1%. To get to this, take the, uh, take the 12 and make it a little bit brighter, a little bit younger, and obviously a bigger hit, you crank that alcohol up. To me, it's just got a lot more of like a first fill bourbon thing going on. It's got more caramel, more vanilla, but it's still got that like kind of sticky jamminess, but it's just not quite as prevalent as it is in the 12. If you are really into the 12 and you like it, but you are looking for a little bit more pop, a little bit more booze in your dram, then you're gonna absolutely love this. It retails for about 65 pounds. As I say, at the moment we're on batch nine. We should be celebrating batch variation. I do not think that the, uh, the later batches are too much further from this. Next up, we have the 10 year old French Virgin Oak. This is bottled at 48%, so 2% higher than the 12 and the 15. On the nose, this has got all those virgin oak notes that we look for. It's got really nice bright caramel and vanilla. But on the palate, it's like parma violets and leather. It almost smells like an old, musty furniture shop, in a good way. It's got such a wonderful, textural, tannic finish. It's almost drying on the back end, which is such a contrast from the sweet, sticky front end. This was £62, it was a limited run. I've seen a few bottles kicking about here and there, but your mileage may vary. Next up, we have the 11-year-old Portwood finish. This is another one that's bottled up at 48%. It spent nine years in a bourbon cast before it was re-racked and spent two years in ruby port pipes. The nose on this is just pure round trees fruit pastels. The palette on this is pure round trees fruit pastels. It's like drinking liquid candy. It is absolutely incredible. Right on the back end, it starts to turn like a little bit cinnamony, a little bit spicy, maybe some fresh baked, uh, fresh baked bread in there. But overall, it's just a beautiful, sticky, sweet, delicious whiskey. It retailed at £55. Um, unfortunately, I think it's all gone from uh, online retailers, but you may do quite well to find some at auction for not much over the retail price. Next up, we have the 11-year-old Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cask Finish. This is another bottled up at 48%. The nose is like roasted nuts and Christmas cake. It's just a massive sherry bomb. It's got all those raisiny, Christmas cakey, fig-like rich, sticky fruits. It's got a bit of a Coca-Cola thing that goes on the back end. It's sweet and it's spicy. It's absolutely massive. This retailed for 60 pounds. Unfortunately, again, I think this is all gone. But check the auctions, because at the last SWA, I did see a few of these going for definitely not much more than retail. Next up, we have the nine-year-old or 2012 cuvee cask finish. What's cuvee? Well, I understand it to be a blended wine. It is just a wine that's made from multiple grape varieties. This particular bottle is bottled up at 48%. On the nose, it's fresh and floral cherries. The palate then turns bitter and sour, like sour cranberries. But then the finish is almost like pure chocolate orange. This is an insanely kind of complex and evolving whiskey. It's still got that kind of classic Glenallochy fingerprint, but this one's just a little bit different. This one's got a little bit more interest and a little bit more evolution than any of the others that I've got here. It retails for 55 pounds and there's still loads of bottles of this kicking about. I would highly recommend you grab a bottle. And lastly, 
Probably the shining star of my Glen Allerkey collection is this 2009 Marsala single cask. This is 12 years old and is bottled up at 58% on the nose. This whiskey is absolutely insane. This is probably one of my top 10 most enjoyed whiskies that I've got on my shelf. The nose is like honey roast peanuts and pineapple. The palate is insanely nutty. It's got an incredibly thick, rich, sticky texture, tons of roast coffee and caramel cream. It is overwhelmingly delicious and full on in flavor, but this is not a rarity for Glen Allerkey. All of these kind of gray label single cask bottles are absolutely insane. They regularly have them in the pot still and you can pick them up for very little money at the distillery. I really wanna say this was about 95 pounds, but I really don't remember because I picked this up from the distillery, but any of them are incredible. I think you would be hard pressed to find one that is not absolutely stunning. If you were picking up this kind of quality of liquid from many other distilleries, I would argue that you'd probably be paying double, if not triple the price. This is another one of those places where you really see that Glen Allerkey value proposition. And speaking of, what is it that I've had in my glass this whole evening? It's the Glen Allerkey 12, because I honestly don't think you can get a better dram for 45 pounds. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching and as usual, an extra special thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Let me know down in the comments if you're into your Glen Allerkeys and if you've had any of these or if you fancy picking one up off the back of my little review. And on that note, Slangevar.